Welcome to another Alfresco video. We are talking today about the role of ActiveNQ in the Alfresco 7.4 platform. So ActiveNQ is used for event driving communication. We are producing and consuming uh, messages in queues and topics, and this asynchronous processing in contracts uh, in difference of the REST API that is asynchronous communication is used for time consuming operations, and it also allows the platform to scale up uh, easier than when uh, the services are communicating using other protocols. We are also providing an uh, external integration, an SDK, so you can uh, consume these messages in order to uh, uh, to provide some kind of event in your uh, custom applications. And we are uh, one telling the delivery by using this standard JMX protocol. We have different uh, services that are part of the Alfresco platform that are using this ActiveNQ uh, service, but we are going with the details about that later. If you want to install ActiveNQ for Alfresco, you can uh, just uh, take a look at this uh, blog post from uh, DVI services, that is um, Alfresco uh, partner and Alfresco community developer. You have also the official documentation. And finally, uh, you can also uh, use ActiveNQ with TLS or with MTLS. So uh, you can uh, set up these resources in order to uh, choose your, your way to use this ActiveNQ. If we look at the community version of Alfresco, the only use uh, in this case is uh, the production of messages that the repository is sending to, uh, to a topic every time a document is subdated or created or uh, removed. So uh, this is only consumed by the auto process SDK. So if you are not using this SDK, uh, likely you want to disable the ActiveNQ. Another thing that is especially relevant is that permissions are not included in this uh, EMS messages. So uh, this uh, permission data is only available when using the Alfresco uh, enterprise version. So uh, if you are not using this SDK, if you don't need that, you can just disable ActiveNQ and you don't need to install the service itself by using this repository settings, these settings on the Alfresco uh, artifact on the Alfresco service. So messaging subsystem auto start false and repo even to enable false. With that, you don't need to use uh, and to deploy the ActiveNQ with a community deployment. We have this uh, sample project, this Alfresco ActiveNQ uh, 7.4 project, and we have a Docker community uh, without ActiveNQ, and we have also this uh, SDK sample. So let's start with that. So you have this uh, Alfresco ActiveNQ uh, 7.4 repository. Let's uh, clone that. Once this is in our uh, computer, we can just switch to Docker uh, community. And we can see that we are using these specific settings on the Alfresco service and that we don't need to deploy uh, the ActiveNQ component, the ActiveNQ service, right? So this is working by default. Uh, every operation is, is working because even the transform service for the community version is not using ActiveNQ. So let's check that everything is working as expected. Once everything is up and ready, we can just check that everything is working fine uh, by using, uh, for instance, the Alfresco content application. So everything is working fine. So no problems with that. So we are using uh, the community version without ActiveNQ just by uh, disabling these uh, properties 
uh, dissolving the service and dissolving the production of the messages uh, on the repository uh, side. Okay, that's fine. Let's move then to check the SDK. If we want to check the, the SDK, uh, then we need to create a deployment with ActiveMQ enabled and with the repository producing the messages to the to the topic. So we are going to create a new uh, Docker community with ActiveMQ. Uh, and for that, we are going to use the uh, uh, Alfresco Docker installer. So we are going to use default options and default port 8080. And in this case, we are going to use the event service, the active and queue without password, just for, for simplicity, right? So now we have a Docker community deployment, but in this case, uh, if we look at this, then uh, the active and queue is uh, is enabled, right? So this is enabled on the repository part, and it's also uh, deployed with this service. Okay, so let's start that again. And once that is ready, we are going to uh, open the uh, the SDK to consume the events produced by the repository. Let's wait a bit till this is ready. So once uh, once everything is ready, now we have a special we have a special port that is the eighty one sixty one with the default credentials admin admin that is the active and queue web console. In this active and queue web console, we are going to see that we have some queues and we have some topics. And in this case, we have the Alfresco repo event to topic. So in this topic, all the messages uh, are being produced by the repo every time that a document changes or a document is created, we are going to get a new message on this queue. Uh, we are going to capture these messages with the Alfresco Java SDK sample. So uh, this is a sample project that is yes uh, is using this Alfresco Java SDK and is also uh, using the uh, Alfresco Java Event API Spring Boot Starter. So we are listening to the events produced by the repository, and uh, we are just uh, logging out the the event. But at this point, you can. Uh, send this event or process this event in order to integrate with uh, another system. So let's uh, um, okay, so let's find this Fresco Java SDK sample. We are going to build this project. Remember that you need Maven and also uh, Java 11 at least. And now we can just start. We can just start the application. So once the application is up and ready, also Alfresco is there. We can uh, check something. It's happened. Could not connect to the broker URL. So let me check that everything is fine. Okay, if we look at the Docker Compose, the active and queue, in this case is exposing only this port, but is not exposing the uh, this other port that in this case is used by the uh, Alfresco SDK. So we need to add also this port at this point. We are going to expose the port external, internal, and we need to start again the composition. And once that is ready, we will be able to listen to the port and to get all the uh, messages that are produced by the repo. Let's wait a bit. Okay, Alfresco is up and ready again. We can uh, see that uh, the ActiveMQ web console is up and running. 
that's fine. And we can start again the client in order to consume all these messages. So now it looks like everything is working fine as expected. Okay, so let's create something. In this case, we can use, for instance, the server web application. So we can uh, create a document with with this server web application to capture all these messages that is producing the repository. So we have this sample document that has been created and we can see that the different created, we created this uh, document. You have all the same content, the name. We have also that the document has been updated. So all the messages are being uh, captured by our application. And we can see also that in this topic, uh, we have uh, consumed all the messages produced by the repository. So that is fine. We have uh, check uh, and community deployment with without active and queue and later a community deployment with active and queue enabled and we are consuming the events with this alfresco java sdk sample so let's move on to the next topic if we uh, change to the enterprise version of alfresco then this active and queue is used for more services than only for the sdk in this case, the repository is producing uh, the messages for node changes and also for the sync service. The sync service is that service that is used by desktop sync. You can install this local application in order to uh, have uh, the Alfresco uh, documents, the Alfresco repository with a client application in Windows or Mac. So the repository is producing a node and sync uh, messages to some topics, and it's also producing and consuming transform operations in this and in some of these queues. We have also the sync service that is consuming these sync uh, messages. We have the search enterprise that is consuming the node events, the events changing the nodes in order to index in Elasticsearch these changes, and is also producing and consuming uh, the transform uh, service from these queues. And finally, the transfer service is producing and consuming transfer operations in the queues. So all these elements are using Active and Queue to communicate uh, some operations that they need to, to build together. If we uh, go to the to the demo in this case, we are going to see uh, we are going to play with a deployment that is using the all-in-one approach. So uh, all the services, the transform service, and also the search enterprise service are deployed as a single service. Oh, and we have also the Docker split. The Docker split is deploying the transform service divided into the different transform engines. And it's also deploying the uh, search enterprise with the different components uh, that can be uh, deployed as individuals. So let's move to that. Again, if we go to the repository, we have the Docker AIO. This one, as I said before, we are deploying the transform service. And in this case, we are using the all-in-one approach. So all the transform engines are deployed into a single service. And the same thing for the uh, Alfresco Elasticsearch Live Indexing. This is a search enterprise that is deployed also using a single service. If we uh, move to this folder, Docker, um, let me find. So we have Docker AIO. OK. We can uh, take a look at the Docker Compose. So we have the Alfresco repository. And then we have all the transfer router, transfer core, AIO, and the cell file store. We have Elasticsearch, and we have also the live indexing in one in one single uh, service. Remember that before running this, you need special credentials to quay.io uh, service, because in this case, 
when we are using enterprise, Docker images are not available in the public Docker Hub registry, but in this private Y.io registry that requires uh, including some credentials in order to use these services. So let's wait a bit till this is starting and we can see the differences with the previous deployment. Once everything is up and ready, we can go back to the uh, ActiveMQ web console. And in this case, we are going to see more topics, right? Uh, we have also this advisory uh, uh, topics that are only uh, to control uh, or to monitor the ActiveMQ. So these are technical messages that are not used by a Fresco stack. This is an internal uh, internal messages for ActiveMQ. And we have also some queues that in this case, we have many of them. And uh, if we uh, create something on the repository, let's go back in with that. We are going to see some new uh, messages uh, on these different queues and topics. So let's again create a document so we can uh, check all the operations that are happening on that on the on the topics we can see this one this one is used by the repository the alfresco repo even two is used by the repository and it's it's also used by the search enterprise so the repository is producing messages and the search enterprise is consuming the messages in order to uh, index these changes in Elasticsearch. And we have also this virtual topic that is used by the sync service. On the uh, queues, we can see that we have this transfer request. So these uh, are uh, operation of transformation, uh, for instance, in this case, we have a transformation of uh, from uh, Word to PDF to uh, display this uh, pre-visualization. So this would be a transfer request. Uh, we have also um, this or alfresco search event that are related with this indexing process. So this one are owned by the uh, search enterprise service. And we have also another internal uh, queues that are used for the transform service. This one are used also by the uh, search enterprise service to get the transformation uh, from the original MIME type to text. So uh, the text can be also indexed. So uh, this is a leaf system with uh, some topics and, and some queues. Uh, working for the different uh, services uh, we are using when uh, when choosing the all-in-one deployment. Let's move now to the uh, Docker split deployment. In this case, we are deploying the transform service with all the transform engine uh, services deployed as individuals. And also the search enterprise is using the individual services. So we are going to see uh, a few changes on these uh, queues and topics, but it's worth to see how that uh, changes. So let's stop this deployment and let's start the uh, Docker uh, split deployment to see what changes in the, in the active and queue web console. So let's start the Docker split. And uh, again, we can uh, go to the compose file. Now we have the repository. We have the transform router. This transform router is connecting to the different transform engines. Uh, and now we have the transform engines, the PDF render, image magic, LibreOffice, Tika, and MISC. Uh, each of one deploy as single service. And on the uh, search enterprise, we have exactly the same thing. We have the leaf indexing mediation that is the, the one uh, consuming the messages in order to uh, generate 
the different uh, messages for uh, content indexing, metadata indexing, or path indexing. And all these services are related to content metadata and path indexing operations. We have also the uh, reindexing operation and so on, but these are the main uh, differences with the previous deployment. So let's wait a bit till this is ready and let's check what are the differences in this uh, ActiveMQ web console. Once Alfresco is ready again, we can go back uh, to the uh, Serve web application to create a new document. So we can uh, check uh, the messages uh, that are produced to the queues and topics. So let's uh, create a single file again. Okay, we are creating a new file. We can uh, just ask for a transformation for the text. Remember that also uh, some transformation uh, is produced by the uh, ActiveMQ. And in this case, we have like more queues, right? So these queues are specific for the transform engine, but all the other are more or less the same. So we have the same queues. We have also uh, the same uh, topics. Remember this one. Technically, we are uh, naming this one as event two and this other as event or event one. This one is uh, used by the sync service and this one is used by the repository. Both are producing uh, messages to these topics. And on the queues, we have again, as I said before, the same thing we have for the search uh, enterprise and also for, for transform. Uh, but in this case, we have specific queues for every different uh, transform engine. So these are the differences. And with that, let's move to the next topic. If we look at the service dependencies, we can find that if you want to deploy the transform service, then you need to use ActiveMQ, but you don't need to use uh, the repository production of messages. And obviously you don't need a transform because it's the same service. If you are using search enterprise, then you need ActiveMQ, you need the repository producing the events to uh, topics, uh, messages for the topic, and you need also the transform service in order to get the text to be indexed from the, from the uh, documents. If you are using the sync service, then you need ActiveMQ and you need the events. I remember that we were uh, talking before about this. So we have the events two and the events subsystems. Both are different. One is for, for the repository to produce this change on the, on the documents. And the other is used for the sync service in order to produce the right messages for the desktop sync application. And we if we are using the Java SDK, then we need the ActiveMQ and the events to uh, messaging subsystem. So with that, you can uh, choose what services to deploy according to your requirements. If you want to monitor the ActiveMQ, you have different options. So you have uh, Jolokia uh, that is a layer on top of JMX, but you can use also J JMX protocol with the J console to get all the uh, different metrics of the system. And uh, you can also use the classic combination of Prometheus and Grafana. So uh, we can see that leaf because we are also uh, just providing some samples for that. So on the Alfresco ActiveMQ project, you have this Docker AIO monitoring with all the uh, with all the instructions in order to use the JMX console or to use the uh, Grafana dashboard. So let's move again to this, to the Docker uh, monitoring. Let's start this composition and let's see all the different ways of uh, monitoring the ActiveMQ. Once Alfresco is up and ready again, we can uh, use the J console. So we can get some metrics. Uh, in this case, it's a remote process. We are exposing port 1099. So we can connect to that. It's an insecure connection. 
And we have access uh, to this ActiveNQ monitoring. We have the classic uh, memory threads and classes and so on. And we have also the NBINs. And the NBINs specific for Apache are in this category. We have the broker with all the different queues, topics, and so on. So this is uh, one uh, option, one alternative uh, to get some monitoring with ActiveNQ. And in, on, the same, uh, on the same deployment, we have also the uh, Prometheus uh, resource that is been using this uh, endpoint. So these are all the different metrics that are available for Prometheus. But if you want to uh, see that uh, with Grafana, then we have also this admin uh, secret. We have also this uh, Grafana dashboard. This is a sample. You can play with that or you can create different metrics. But we have a summary with the process log, Java memory, uh, consumer and producers, and queue and the queue, uh, memory usage, uh, the store, the memory, uh, the queue consumer, the queue size, uh, and so on. So uh, you can apply your monitorization with this uh, Grafana dashboard. You can add or modify any of the metrics you need. But with that, you are able uh, to get your system control. Finally, some tips on maintenance of the ActiveNQ is the storage. So if you are using Docker volumes, then this is the folder you need to, to control. In this case, we have a bind volume. We have a, a local folder that is mapping this data folder inside the ActiveNQ. Uh, so you need to take care about this uh, backup and, and so on for this folder. This is the only folder that you need to, to backup because this includes configuration also and, and data. So that's fine. You need to control the disk space usage and specific for, for, for this folder. Uh, resource consumption in terms of CPU and, and RAM. Uh, you can get that from monitoring. You can clear messages from some topic or queue if they are not consumed in order to reduce uh, the use of your system. And you can also uh, apply some policy to the advisory messages. Remember that messages that uh, are uh, on the topic, if we go back to this, we can see that in the topic we have these advisory messages. So you can also apply uh, some uh, policy on them in order to get that uh, clean. Uh, but again, this is ActiveNQ, and you have uh, many different resources in order to get this control. So it's not a specific version for Alfresco. It's a regular ActiveNQ. So uh, just uh, go in and find in the official documentation your way in order to maintain this service. So that was everything today. I hope that was useful, and see you next time.